Oh my goodness, dude, finally got it in, but oh my god, it was so difficult. Hello, welcome to Scratch Your Printing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take out the extruder from FlashForge AD5X. Let's scratch today's troubleshoot. I was printing TPU with FlashForge AD5X using the IFS and it works like a charm. I love the AD5X, how you can print TPU with the IFS. So basically, you can print multi-material with the IFS. Unlike Creality, the CFS or like the Ace Pro, you cannot print flexible filament with it. I I'm going to be making a video comparing the IFS against Creality Multi-Material and any cubic multi-material just to see what is the difference. How can this print TPU while the other cannot? So look at this, I was printing a tie hair which is a project that I am working on so if you don't want to miss it, subscribe to the channel because this is going to be amazing. I was printing this tire on the ADFX. TPU 64D. It's not the softest but it's not like the roughest and it's still TPU. Other 3D printers cannot print them, so I use the AD5X and it works. But then after two tires, it got clogged on the extruder. So I'm going to show you exactly how to carefully take out the extruder without ruining anything and the simplest way to do it. So let's go over to the 3D printer and I'm going to show you how to do it. My suggestion is if you have not taken this off yet, don't, okay? My mistake was taking this off because the pin inside there is so soft, okay? The pin inside of that is very, very soft. I was bending some of the pin, but then I used my tweezer and tried to get the pin as straight as possible. And I finally got it in. I was printing TPU with my ADE5X and it got clogged. So I'm going to show you guys how to unclog this. From the extruder, I already took out the nozzle, cleared the nozzle, nothing happened. I tried retracting, nothing works. So I'm going to, you know, look inside this extruder and see what is going on inside that. I'm going to take off the extruder and then I'm going to take off the top part here. Okay, in order to take the extruder off, we need to take off one screw here, one screw here, one screw here, and the other one is hitting behind this wire over here. So let's take off all those screws. These screws are in there, so you know, if you cannot take it out, have some magnet with you and then just go in there and get out like that because there's lots of magnet in here and sometimes the screws just don't want to come out so if you have magnets use it so once you take off those four screws you need to take off the nozzle as well so just do that once you have all those screw off and the nozzle out you can take off the extruder but be very careful because way way up here right there there's a wire attached to the whole extruder thingy so just careful take it out like this if you want you can take out this wire up here too but that is pretty much it we look right here it has a line right here so it's sandwiched together i will try to see if i can take off this uh thing up here but it looks like mine was broken look at that piece of plastic broke so i'm not sure if i can take it off right now i managed to take the wire off which is going to be so much more easier to work with this and less of a chance that we actually break this wire because this wire is does not seem be to be replaceable so you gotta be very careful with this wire unless you want to replace the whole extruder thingy okay so we're just gonna go over this very fast so right here is the filament cutter it's inside of this you can take out these two screws to see the cutter in there the small board there is the filament detector so once the filament comes down here to this board it detects that it has filament this is the filament tensioner this as you can see there this there's split so we can just pry this open so we can just take off this back piece apart without taking any more off from this we can just slowly do it careful okay so that's just the back cover and look at this looks like this is just a plastic gear so we're just gonna take it, this off too carefully hopefully there's not any spring in here oh my gosh look at that look at my filament gear here it's all you know nasty stuff like that and would you look at that you see right there look at that filament is stuck in there it's black tpu and it's stuck right in there so we can unscrew this to release tension screw this to get more tension i like this design so you can work with different filament unlike the k2 plus where you cannot do any of that look at that we can see the screw on tension a little bit the screw is going backward so it's putting less tension there Okay, well, I'm just going to do it that. And as you can see right here, this is pushable now. So hopefully we have made enough room to remove this stuck 
filament in here. I just took that out and the screw, the spring is still in there, which is nice. Okay. Wow. Look at that. That is very interesting. The spring here is very interesting. I never see a brown spring like this. This is just a normal spring. It's just coated in brown and it is very, very strong. It's not completely circle or square. It's kind of like a flat spring, which is cool. It has this thread here so that you can tighten the tensioner, which is really nice because you don't have to force the spring in and only have one tension. You can mess around with it. And look at this. I have no idea why this filament decided to go off road to the left hand side there. And we cannot seem to pull this. There we go. Okay, I can pull this now. Look at that. Yeah, so whatever, that part is just ruined. So I'm just gonna cut this. Throw that part away, and looks like we will be able to uh, retract this. Let's see, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna retract it a little bit. Wow, this is a really nice, clean, simple design, and it works amazingly. I feel like this design is so much better than Creality K2 Plus design. I I actually like this design so much better. You don't have to mess with any more spring. It has the bore there for filament detection and the spring, I believe, if you look there, it's inside right there. That's the spring where the filament comes down. It hits that small spring and then triggers that there's filament, which is a pretty nice design. So now that we got that out, I'm going to show you how to put it back because it is quite tricky. In order to put this back, we need to put in the spring first, which is this brown spring right here. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Let's put in the spring and then let's screw in a little bit so that it's stuck in there. There we go. Now we're going to put this piece in there. Kind of angle it like this so that the spring sits in there. And what makes it so easy is that look at this. They have a cutout right here so that it fits perfectly with the spring. So you just basically slide it in here. Just like that. You just slide it in there. And then you can tension this to make the spring tension this, which is a really cool design. Very easy to work with like that. Not all the way in yet. It's just enough so that this does not pop out. So while we were doing that, this small rod pops out. So it goes to the top here. So that's where the rod goes. We can now just put this gear back in here. Just wiggle it so that it fits in there. If it does not fit, unscrew this screw a little bit so it releases the tension. So that we can kind of push this gear to the left and then slide it in. And now it's sitting flush in there. Unfortunately, there's not like a hole that we can see if both the gears are really like sitting next to each other. But if we just look at here, this is sitting flush. So we know that, okay, it is sitting next to each other. We can now just screw this screw tensioner all the way in. We can just put the back cover in, put the back cover in there. Line it up and then just snap fit. And we can spin this very freely, easily. And up here, right there, that's the motor that's gonna spin this gear here. And then this is gonna spin the filament gear. Now that we have all of this, we need to connect this wire back up here. It's gonna be very tight. So I don't know, maybe I can record this, maybe I can't. But I'll try my best to get it in there. Oh my goodness, dude, finally got it in. But oh my God, it was so difficult. My suggestion is if you have not taken this off yet, don't, okay? My mistake was taking this off because the pin inside there is so soft, okay? The pin inside of that is very, very soft. I was bending some of the pin, but then I used my tweezer and tried to get the pin as straight as possible. And I finally got it in. But my suggestion is that if you have not taken this off, don't take it off unless you really want to, you know, play around with it. But yeah, it is very difficult to put it back in because the pin are so, so small, it's so fragile. So if you did take it off, be very extra careful. If you have not taken it off yet, maybe just kind of turn like this and you can just ply this open because it is very, very difficult to put it back in. Put the wires inside of here. And now that we got all the wires in here, let's just tape it <laughs> like that. And make sure none of the wire is bending. And just kind of bend the wire so that it does not get in the way of this. And it does not touch anything because in the future it might, you know, break. So now that we got that in, we can go ahead and put the nozzle back. 
and we just have to put one, two, three, four screw back and we are totally set. Are you working on a project and don't have the power to power that project? Well, here I am, scratch 3 battery, it ranges from 1S, 2S, 3S, and all the way to 4S battery pack 18650, high quality pack from scratch 3 battery. If your project requires all types of battery, I got you covered, all types of connection, I got you covered, all the way from XT60 to JSTXH 2.54 millimeter, JSTXM Dean connectors, all types of connector, balance charger, anything you need. Scratch 3D battery have it. Link will be in the description down below on my eBay store. All right, as you saw there, it was pretty simple. You just take off the four screw, take out the nozzle so that it's not interfering with the extruder and then you just pull it out. And then the back cover is just there. You just pop the back cover out. It's pretty simple. But one thing that you need to be very worried about is that small ribbon cable. It's not like wire cable. That's a ribbon cable. So it's very small, very thin. And if you break it, you gotta have to buy a new brand new extruder. Or maybe you have to buy the whole print head, which costs about $100. I was just looking up FlashForge AD5X accessories and it really costs a lot. One nozzle costs $25. The whole print head costs like a hundred bucks. Like that is so expensive. But yeah, be very careful with the ribbon connector. I did take it off and it was very, very hard to put it back in. Like I mentioned earlier, I did kind of bend the pin a little bit, but I was very careful and I was able to put it back. So nothing was broken and I tested it and it works fine. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like this is coming. I'm making a project with these tires for my RC cars. And I'm going to also be comparing the IFS with the CFS and the Ace Pro. How is this? superior to the other units. If you still have any questions, put it in the comments down below. I will try my best to answer you. If you haven't yet become a member of the YouTube channel, it helps me tremendously. And those of you that already became a member, thank you so much. And also thank you so much for all my Patreon members. Thank you, you guys so much. And as always, keep on 3D printing.